All right, well, this is going to be a little bit new, but we're going to do a little bit of Tabletop Simulator. I bought a couple DLCs recently, and this is one of them that I'll be showing off. All right, so the first game, let's see if we can find it in here. I really don't like this stuff if I can like find stuff, so let's just do this. Uh, there. The captain is dead. That's the game we're going to be showing off. Alright, so this is a game I basically bought. It's a cooperative game. Uh, I can play with like two or some players. Actually, let's just go in here. So, the captain is dead. And... Yeah, right here. The captain is dead. It's for two to seven players. It's basically 6 to 90 minutes to play. Ages for 12 and up. Um, this is version 1.6, so there's older versions than this, and there might be newer ones maybe if you're watching this video in the future. The captain is dead. Our jump course offline. There's a hostile alien ship off our port side. We need to repair the jump core so we can get out of here. You have trained to do this. You know what to do. What needs to be done? Get Go to it. Alright, so. Uh, the objective in this game is basically to survive. And you're going to do that by escaping, basically. Your basic game's already, you know, more or less set up. We got all the uh, characters we can play over here. Um, I'm going to jump into, uh, I guess, page three over here. So the setup. Basically, you place the game board in the middle of the table, uh, and this is your ship. It's the only thing between you and the vacuum of space. Um, there's basically a bunch of systems, so you've got like, you know, computers and internal centers, you got a cargo pod, you got a jump core you got to repair to help the teleport, which is to teleport around. There's a science station. Basically, if you watch Star Trek, you've got, you get the basic gist of what they're going to be in here. You got like, you know, the sick bay and you got the armory and everything else. Um, and essentially with these like stuff, we're going to be doing, you know, a whole lot of things. Now, this is like my sort of like second time playing and first time I was really playing for like, um, well, well whatever. Uh, but whatever, we're just going to do this stuff here. Uh, we're going to shuffle this deck. We're going to shuffle this deck. And we're going to shuffle this deck. And basically, these are like um, our turn counter in this game. The game will progressively get harder as like it goes along. So we'll have like orange alerts. We'll have um, yellow alerts and red alerts. Red alerts are bad. That usually means you're about to die. But whatever. Oops. Okay, we not draw a card. And draw a card. We'll get to those in a bit. Um, we're going to have basically a free player game. You can play a single player if you want to. And because it's a cooperative game, you can do that. But let's just see here. Now, there's basically game rules in here where, like, everyone picks a role. Or, like, you know, you don't have to pick a role. Basically, like, you know, you have to, like, divvy up, like, you know, um, a character for everyone who basically plays. How we're going to basically do this, um, we're just going to... Group up the cards. These are basically the playing cards. We're going to shuffle these up. There's basically like multiple ways to really do it, but what they basically have is you pick like a color and then like, you know, you can like pick one of the things from like that color, but we're going to do it differently. We're going to go, um, pick two cards for each player. And then we got the cyborg, the janitor. We've got counselor and chief engineer. All right, so basically we've got like you know a bunch of these guys that we can basically play. So each person basically like you know will be divided up two cards and we'll have to pick a couple. You got the cyborg over here. Um, they're unaffected by anomalies. They have a, a basically five actions they can do. And cyborg's not bad to basically have around for doing stuff. So we might take him. It's also a janitor I could pick here. Basically, he's got four actions. He's going to have a hand size of five. Um, he may spend an action as wild skill cards when repairing or reinstalling systems. It's so basically like you can use this like actions as like wild skill cards. Uh, for example, he may spend four actions to repair the shields rather than spending two actions in two tackle. We'll get into more about this later. And he has one extra action per turn when he starts his turn of a tool. So he's basically a special guy, but we're going to go to Cyborg, I guess. So we'll draw you over here. And you can just go back into pile. We don't really care about you. We got the chief engineer and council over here. So the chief engineer is good at repairing stuff. 
and when repairing the jump core, may spend one last action to do so. Uh, the counselor basically may exchange one skill in her hand per one skill in a discard pile for one action. So basically, if she wants to, she can basically you know get the skill she needs to do stuff. Um, she gets an extra action on her turn. If another player is present in her location at the start of her turn, that's cool and all, but I think the chief engineer is better for a small, you know, three-player game, so we'll take her. And yoink. So you're back in the pile. And then we got Ensign and Telepath. The Telepath basically may give or take a skill to or from another player in any location for one action regardless of the size of the comp system, which is useful, and may use the skill discounts of any um, or all players in the current location. So basically that guy's like in the, like, you know, the chief engineer's place, he can do like, you know, the, um, the chief engineer's thing where, uh, when you're a jump cord, you can spend like one last action, for example, though that would be kind of difficult for him to do. It's probably not beneficial to have a telepath, I think. The answer is probably more beneficial. He may give or take cards from another player in the current locations for free action, so he can like, give his stuff easily. And he may spend one action to move up to four spaces, um, and this is unaffected by increased gravity, so... We'll have basically a really fast team that's not affected by like gravity, which is cool. Let's get this guy. And you can go back in a deck. I really need these cards, so let's, you know, whatever, just gonna delete them. We don't really need them. Actually, no, let's just move them to the side. Up there. Alright, so now we need to get our guys. We got the Ensign here. He starts in a white room, so he starts in a computer core. We got the Cyborg. The Cyborg starts in a green place, which is a science lab. And then we got uh, the chief engineer who's going to start in the warp core, or engineering. And then we don't really need these guys, so we'll just clump them up and say... Oh, that's cool, you can just throw them in there. Put them in the game box. So now everything's in there, I guess. Cool. And there's roll colors here, we don't really care about the roll colors, so... Put that in there. Alright, so now the next thing I have to basically do is deal five cards for each of, the, for each of these guys. So, um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. And now we basically have to like look at our cards and basically discard one, two with the card pod. And by the way, there's also tools in the car robot, but we'll get to that in a moment. So let's just flip these, flip these, flip these, flip these. Group, flip. Well, that works. Group. Okay, we've got in this deck, five engineer. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you don't really need all that engineer for anyone, but whatever. That goes to the car robot. You've got... Seriously? That... Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to uh, shuffle this, the skill deck. Yeah, you should probably do that. You know, shuffle things. So we're just going to group these up and we're going to properly shuffle them. Everything comes on, um, you know, unshuffled in this game at the start, so... Okay, let's put that back up here. Now when I take the cards, there should be a mixture of cards, basically. So we'll search this. We basically have two tactical, two science, and an engineer for this guy. Um, the Ensign is pretty useful for um, basically giving cards around and moving around to locations and such. He'll probably be good at giving up cards if he needs to. Actually, what we really should do at this point is like, you know, just flip these around. And we're just going to do this with them because... You, we want, this is a cooperative game, there's no like, you know, reason to hide these cards, so... So you've got two science. Alright, we got basically the same cards for these guys. Engineering, command, engineering, engineering. 
Well, I, I like this. We have lots of engineering. Engineering is actually really useful because you need it for, you know, obviously, uh, you know, repairing your jump course is how you win the game. So that's good to have. Um, let's get rid of this science card over here. Let's get rid of this science card over here. And let's get rid of, uh, hmm. Let's get rid of tactical, maybe. I really wish there was a headset that, you know, you could like basically like, you know, um, essentially put on and like, you know, you could do stuff. Actually, no, something in this game I actually do. I could put on like a radio. And there is actually stuff like that, so. Put like this over here. But, you know, basically a bunch of stuff in here, so. I have no idea if any of this is going to like kill my like video, but whatever, it's fine. That's going to be my background music for now, just so you know, I don't have to keep turning on and off my like, you know, thing. Alright, so basically like these guys all have their cards set up. We put free over here. That's done. So basically, after that, uh, after that, we basically have to go. Um, I think it's draw five action cards at this point. Or we're we supposed to do that a little bit earlier. Let's just go to this four here. Alright, before you begin, basically, um, here's where I think it is, yeah. So basically, you basically have to, like, draw five alerts at this point, and these are, like, gonna be, like, initial damage that's gonna be done to your ship. Basically, the setting of this game, the captain is dead. What happened is, uh, alien ship pops out, I guess, out of, like, hyperspace, and it picks a shot, and it kills the captain, who's the first casualty of the war. So, this battle, the captain died immediately, and his crew is basically all that's left behind. His crew basically has this, like, you know, manage the ship, but before they can do anything, um, the alien ship does a whole lot of att attacks to the ship. The first thing that happened here, they had a torpedo that went offline, and all the players in the army were, were injured. There's clearly no one in the, tor um, the armory, so that's good, but the base is basically offline, so we got no weapons. And this will go into our discard pile. Actually, you know what? We can just move this over here a little bit. This is our discard pile over here, so... That's basically one alert done. Next thing that happened after, like, you know, the attack, two, uh, two hostile aliens basically beat into the armory. So, on top of, like, you know, damaging the torpedoes, a bunch of aliens jumped in. And they're basically holding it down, preventing you know, us from repairing and stuff until they're, like, dealt with. Now, I should be, like, you know, drawing these as we go along. We got an anomaly, so we got increased gravity. Basically, with this, you move one space for one action instead of two spaces and tell person affected. If it is a two-player game, you discard this, but um, this isn't a two-player game, so we, this is going to be in play. So, active anomalies, this is active. All my like, guys are going to basically be moving one turn per space instead of two. Basically, in this game, your guys can usually move two, um, two tiles uh, every like turn. But because, like, you know, basically this is in play, they can only go, like, through, like, the hallway for a turn, and, like, to here for a turn. It'll basically increase, like, your cost from moving and stuff until I get rid of it. Okay, this one. The computers are offline. Discard the skill deck. All players in computer core are injured. So, apparently we got our first injury here. This guy's gonna get injured. Until he gets healed up, the ensign. And the computers are offline. This is bad because it basically discards our skill deck. So... Oh, I forgot to do something. You actually are supposed to have like a few cards drawn here for your internal sensors, so let's get this out of the way. Ooh, all that engineering. But this thing's just basically discarded. We can't draw any more cards until this thing's repaired. So that's done. We now have three alerts drawn. Next thing to happen, eternal sensors are offline. So basically all the skills that are currently in um this thing just gets got, just got discarded. 
and this is offline. Boom! Internal sensors are offline, and this guy gets injured again, but he's already injured, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so that's out of the way. That's four cards. And then finally, torpedoes are offline again, because, like, you know, we got a ship attack. And this actually damages our shield by 10%. And as you can see, shields, as it gets down like the lower and lower, it'll, like, you know, start costing you a game if it gets too low to 0%, which is bad. So basically, that's what happens initially. Now, the internal sensors basically let me see what's going to, or external sensors let me see what's going to pop up soon. Um, basically, next turn, what's going to happen is two aliens going to add to the war room, and players in the war room are getting injured if they're there. And then we'll have another, like, you know, uh, anomaly pop up. Basically, this one, players may not use or repair systems if no other player is present in the location. So apparently, you need to have two people in order to do stuff, and it signs off that lab is not affected. It is it's a two player game, you need to discard this, but because, like, we got three players, it'll be in play. Alright, now that we basically have like this all set up, we can actually start playing the game. So, basically, um, after you draw like all this stuff, you know, you can start playing the game. The first player who goes is going to be the guy at the highest rank. Uh, how the ranks are basically done, this guy's rank 7, this guy's rank 2, and this guy's rank 5. The person with the lowest rank will go first, and I'll just like quickly go in here and search. And... Basically, how ranks work. Each of these guys has a rank. Um, if you look at the admiral here, he's like rank one. Uh, the first offer is rank one. Basically, these guys go first if, like, you know, um, they're in the game because, like, they're like, you know, the guys first after the captain. Um, besides them, you have like other people. Um, you have like the crewman who's like rank three and like, you know, holograms rank seven. You get the basic idea. Basically, like, the lower your rank, the you know, the faster you go. So the first thing is like rank first is the chief engineer here. And then after her goes the cyborg and then the ensign. Uh, I'm just going to restructure these cards a little bit so that like, you know it's not as confusing. Anyway, I got this entire table here, right? So let's have the ensign just move over here a little bit. And then you can go right there. There we go. Alright, so the chief engineer is going to go first. So basically at the start of the game, um, she's residing in the warp core place here. And she actually has like, you know, the ability to fix the warp core, uh, jump core a little bit faster basically, if she has the engineer to do it, which she does not at the moment. So, first things first, she needs to get some like, you know, engineering going on. The cyborg here has all the engineering, which is like, you know, uh, interesting. So what we're going to do with her is start to get that, uh, you know, that um, engineering from him, so we can actually get some, you know, repairs going on. So we'll go over here to the cyborg. That'll take us two turns because basically she has to move from this hallway to this place right here. Or actually, you know what? It won't. Basically, there's a teleport in this game, so it'll teleport her into the science lab. And what's going to happen here? We're going to go to uh, the cyborg and say, "Hey, I need to have your cards." So basically, for each, like, you know, I'll know if you look at the back here, you can see what they do. So you can move up to two spaces, or if the anomaly can be one per, um, per action per space, or you can kill off the aliens per space. You can carry another player of one space, you can use skills or tools, or you can take a uh, skill or tool from another player in location. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, like, her remaining actions here to take a tool, um, uh, engineering. We're going to take uh, another engineering. Now, note by the way that she's got a hand size. She can only have up to six cards before she has to start discarding them. So she can't take this engineering unless she discards a card, uh, um, one of these first. So what we're gonna do with uh, the next one here? Let's just go and we'll give the cyborg here a science, and that'll be the uh, chief officer's turn. So basically, that's basically concludes her turn. She's used up her four actions. And you can see how many actions these people have, like, right here. So she's got four actions to start with. That's her turn. At the end of the turn, there's going to be, like, a bad, like, you know, alert happening. So what's going to happen next? Two aliens are going to appear in the war room. Now, note by the way, you want to be, you want to deal with these aliens as they come along. Because if at any time, like, ten aliens or more, or if once you get, like, 11 aliens in, on, the, on the game, you basically lose. Because they've taken over the ship, the aliens. So you want to eventually deal with, like, the aliens, but whatever. We'll put that there, and that's the end of, like, you know, that alert. 
It's gonna suck if this pops up, but not much I can do about it. All right, so basically at this point, um, we got the like you know the cyber. He's he's got five actions he can basically do. He's not affected by anomalous, which is good because he can basically run around a little bit easier than like you know his compatriots. Well, I guess like this guy can run around too as well, but whatever. He can basically work in like you know the irrational fear, fear connection, which is nice. So that's good about him. We're gonna do with him though. We're gonna have him move over to um, the ensign here. Actually, no. Before we do that, he's gonna drop off his engineering to the chief engineer, so that, like she can get like you know the engineering done basically next turn. And he's gonna then like go to let's see here. He's gonna go over to the ensign with his next turn. So turn two. And I'm gonna say, hey, Ensign, what's up? You're pretty injured, but whatever. Um, let's just take his science from him. So, boink and boink. So there's like free science for like the cyborg here. Maybe spend one, blah blah. Now, because like this guy has like you know make give or take cards for free, what that means is the cyborg is gonna get those cards for free. So he doesn't have to worry about like you know um, stuff like that. He's still got this command card, which is good. But right now we're basically in like, you know, this place right here with like, you know, it's basically like, you know, close to um, the science lab. If I like move away from the science lab and the teleports go offline, it'll take longer to get back to the science lab. I'm going to have to basically research these things soon. So let's just go over here. I've basically got like, you know, the options to try and like, you know, repair stuff. This guy still has free options or you know free actions basically do stuff because like he just used like a one to give something to the chief engineer and then like he moved over here to like the um uh engine core for second action he's still got free actions left what we're gonna do next let's just go over here to the computers and we're gonna fix the computers and that will mean that i'll be able to go in here and we'll basically reshuffle this and then we'll start be able, we'll, it'll, it'll start uh, drawing cards basically next time all right we got ourselves another anomaly here so we got players may not use or repair systems if no other players have a location in that thing. So that's really bad anomaly to have happen. So we're going to have to go deal with that soon, basically. Basically, anomaly is like, they're, they're a gift to keep on giving. So you have to basically get rid of these before um, anything else. I'm not sure if like there's a, a rule where like you can only have like one anomaly or not, but we're gonna say that we can have like you know two anomalies. So there's a second anomaly hitting us. Now next thing that's gonna happen, we're gonna start taking more damage, and computers are gonna go back offline apparently because I was stupid and I didn't realize that you know that's gonna happen. So oops. Uh, well we can't pick, take back the turn, so the computers are gonna go back offline soon, but whatever. And. That's gonna suck, but whatever. Now, the answer is he's injured. And when you're injured, you can't do much. You can only like move spaces or you can kill hostile aliens. So the answer basically has to get himself healed up. He's gonna take a turn to go over to the infirmary. And then he'll like go to the infirmary and he'll use this action to basically like you know heal up. So you know he's basically he's new. Then I think what he's gonna do next, he's gonna go back to here. And he's going to spend one, one of his, like, tacticals to basically fix up the, um, you know, the internal sensors, at least. So we'll do that. We'll basically spend our tactical, repair this. Now, because this has been repaired, we can put down free cards and internal sensors. And there we go. Now we got, like, a couple of engineering and a couple of tacticals, or a capital to basically do with. But, of course, because, like, computers are going to go offline, they go offline, and basically we're going to discard, discard a skill deck again. Boop. Now, the internal sensors and the computers are a little bit different because, like, you know, you can have, like, I guess, like, you know, um, I guess these things uh, face up. I'm not really sure if, like, they, they like, go down or not. We could play if, like, it goes down and, like, you can't do anything, but, you know, that's whatever. So... Now, I know, by the way, because, like, uh, I might have, like, this, like, you know, rational fear, I was able to, um, go in here, and I, oh, wait, you know what? Maybe this guy couldn't heal up in, like, the, um, the infirmary. Hmm. What's this basically mean? 
He may not use or repair systems if no other player is present in his location. So that's really interesting. I wonder if that means that he can't use the infirmary. If that's the case, he wouldn't be able to use anything in the infirmary. And he can't like um, he can't carry people when he's injured, so that's bad. Hmm. You know, let's just say the infirmary is like on Mac. Um, it basically just you know heals a player. I'll say that's like my own custom rule, but you could like have it so like you know it follows the rules, whatever. You know, you have to do whatever. Door games, you can make your own rules. Okay, so basically, you know, stuff happens, and I forgot to um, draw a card up here, which sucks, but whatever. All right, so next thing that's going to happen: the comp system's going to go offline, and all the people in the virtual are injured. Then teleport's going to go offline. So there's a teleport finally going offline. So. Um, I want to be very careful having guys inside the like engineering deck here because they'll get injured if they're in the in the engineering deck, which would be bad. I want to have them close to the engineering deck, but you know, not too far away from it. All right, so that's basically done. Um, so basically, because like the engineering is going to go offline soon, ish, I don't want to have like the and the chief engineer probably go in there and like get injured, but hmm. I guess what we're going to do with her, let's have her just like head, head over to like the armory I guess. And she's going to spend a couple turns just you know killing these aliens. So, blop. She's got one turn left, she can repair the torpedo tube. Now she's basically got the skill um, to like you know basically help out, she's got a discount basically on engineering skills. So she can repair the torpedo tube for basically free with like an action. And that's basically online again. And she's, you know, this is going to happen next, so the comp system is going to go offline. So, comp system's off. Now, no boy, if you want to, you can actually, like, use this to, like, give up, um, you know, your, your skills. Probably should have done that with, like, the cyborg, but whatever. Can't remember um, if that's what I did, but whatever. I could, like, you know, just exchange skills there. I might have, like, made a mistake. Um, I may have goofed. That's something I know. Um, this is like my like I haven't really played this game a whole lot, so I'm like goofing a little bit. That's fine, I guess. If I was playing with other people, I hopefully wouldn't goof this much. This is like one of my first times playing this game, right? Or second time, I guess. All right, so the comp system's offline. Let's put that there. Next thing that's gonna happen is the teleport's gonna go offline, and ooh, that's gonna be bad if we get people in, in the science lab. But we'll have to deal with that at some point. Oh, you know what? I can't actually repair the um, the armory until like you know um, stuff happens. So we can't actually repair the um, this thing here. Okay, I know what to do. We're just gonna do that. And after she basically finished there, let's say like the chief engineer decide to. Go here, I guess, to the infirmary. So like this guy can heal up next time. Well, I guess we already heal him up. Let's just say that she, like, you know, decides to, uh... Is anything going to happen to the bridge anytime soon? No, let's just say that she teleports over to the bridge. And she'll start repairing that. When she gets a chance. Alright, so basically it's now, like, this guy's turn. You know what, let's just, like, do this quickly. We're just going to, like, you know... So I know who's, like, got their turn going. Okay, so the cyborg, he's currently in here. In the, um... You know, this place is the CPU. He needs to get um, this, like, you know, uh, rational fear out of the way as quickly as possible. So let's just get the science going. He's just going to draw one, as, like, you know, from the center of sensors. He can't draw another one because, like, you know, the um, computers are offline, we're going to say. Oops, that's a, that's a cargo pod. That's not good. All right, well, I guess the first thing he's going to do is repair the, um, in, you know, the computer. So I guess the computer repaired for two of his actions. And the next thing he'll do is he'll is basically just go up here and he'll... Now, if I want to, he can just draw cards directly into his hand. He doesn't have to use the eternal scanner if like, he doesn't like what's there. So let's try and do that. We're going to do it here and he got himself some engineering. And he got a command. Okay, that's a, decent, I guess. So he got himself a, a, a command and engineering there for his end of his turn. And now the teleports go offline. So... Boom. Done. So no more teleporters. Which is bad for a chief engineer because this means he's going to take forever to move around now. Unless they're getting repaired. 
All right, so next we're going to have the, the science lab having difficulties, so that's an issue to worry about, but I'll be for in a bit. All right, so it's now the Ensign's turn. The Ensign needs to do what now? So this guy can, like, exchange cards for free if he needs to. I think what we're going to do right now, we're just going to take a couple command cards from this guy for free. And it'll give, like, the engineering card for free, because why not? Now this guy can do stuff with engineering if he needs to. Um, so basically he'll do that for free. Won't cost him any actions to do that. I think the next thing after that was going to do, he is going to run up here to um, try and deal with these guys. So he'll take an, two actions, or no, he'll take one action because, like, you know, he's the, um, the ensign. So he's unaffected by, like, you know, increased gravity. He's going to basically use one action to go, go up here and he'll kill these guys with two actions. Now, there's something called the Captain's Journal up here. And basically what you can do is you can use it to draw a battle plan. Which, oh, you know what? Um, he, he can't actually do that. But basically, he can do that like when he gets a chance. Um, so basically, he's just going to like kill those guys, I guess. And then um, he'll have to move somewhere. Let's say he's going to move maybe up here to help you out. Might be the idea. Yeah, let's do that. We'll move up here, and then, like, you know, that'll be the end of his turn, and then, like, he can help out, like, this one, like, you know, doing, like, her thing. Because, basically, with Irrational Fear, she won't be able to repair that until, like, you know, there's a second person there, so now he's the second person there. Alright, so, this happens next. Science Lab has, like, a couple of people drop into it. So, we'll have to deal with the new enemies that are spawning there. Alright, so now it's the Chief Engineer's turn, and we're just going to rotate these back around to indicate that's now a new, like, wave of turns. So it's the Chief Engineer's turn. She basically has to do some stuff to, like, you know, get some repairs going on. First thing she's going to do is repair the comm system. So that'll take a up a couple of her cap tacticals. Now she's with the Ensign, and the Ensign, of course, has, like, you know, the, um, uh, two commands with with them. I could like exchange the um, commands with this guy if I want to, but I think we're gonna do it at this point. Let's just march the um, the chief engineer down one, two. Because there's a you know the the whoops I uh, actually moved the wrong person. Because the ensign or the cyborg is currently in the computer core, she can do stuff in the computer core. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have her draw the engineer from here, so she has like an engineering card for like you know fixing the warp core because she'll be doing that. And then she can like draw our skill. And that'll be basically her turn. So basically she like drew a card, she moved a few spaces, she fixed that thing. And now we're going to get some really bad stuff. The teleport's going to go off a line again. You can't have like, um, you know, basically damage twice, so this is, this is going to be one damage. Move this down one. Oh, alien fire's going to be popping up soon, that's going to be a nuisance to deal with. But anyway, so that's basically her turn. And I actually rotated these guys the wrong way, but, you know, whatever. So now it's Cyborg's turn. So he's currently inside with, like, you know, the Chief Engineer chilling and all that. He needs to uh, deal with um, these guys in the, in the, you know, the science lab and, like, get, you know, some, you know, research going. So what he's going to do, he's going to draw one science card. Because he can. I keep forgetting that Carl Pod is a little bit different than the science lab. That's a bit of an issue, but whatever. Um, unfortunately, he, he doesn't have the science to, like, do anything in here with, like, the research station, which is a big issue. So, we have to, like, draw cards randomly, I guess. There's, like, no, an engineer, so that's one turn. Let's just give the engineering to him for a second card. We're going to draw another card. There's the engineering he needs, so that's his third action get there. His fourth action is going to be to come down and... He's just going to do this. For his like final action. So basically he, he like spent three actions like you know drawing cards and giving one to her. Came down, knocked out one of those guys. Next thing we're gonna basically do is uh have the ensign like you know try and help out, but in a moment we have to take some damage first. So this is gonna happen first. We're gonna have like a bit of like you know shield damage, so that'll happen. And 
down to 60%. So that's good for the shields. Well, shields are suffering quite a bit here. Alright, so it's now time for this guy to shine. He needs to, like, march down all the way over to, um... Uh, the science lab. This will take him one turn because he basically goes one, two, three, four because of his, like, special ability here. One action, even increased gravity to, like, go all the way down wherever he needs to. So, he's gonna drop right here for one action. Kill this guy for a second action. Because of his ability to, like, take whatever he wants, he can, like, take all four of his cards, and he can fix one of the anomalies. And we're getting rid of his damn irrational fear, so it's not in a board anymore, so that's gone. And all these things from this guy are just gonna go over here. And this is actually pretty damn useful for this game, I think. Alright, so, next thing that happens, um... That is basically, uh, three turns. This guy now has one more thing that he can basically do. Let's say he, um... He can basically take both these cards if he wants to. But I think what we're going to do it right now... Actually, I might probably just check this out for now. What's happening in the future? Alright, so basically we've got one of the shields uh, take damage, increase damage by 10%. Uh, come offline, reduce shields by 10% and come offline. My comm system's constantly going to go offline, apparently. That still sucks. Alright, that alien sh ship is going to be a nuisance if we let it, like, you know, sit around. We're going to have the ensign like, move over here. I think. Actually, you know what? The ensign won't be able to do anything over here. He doesn't have any, um... Uh... Basically, repair abilities. And even if he did, he wouldn't be able to fire his off. He doesn't have the skills for it. The tactical rider. Hmm. I think we're going to do with this guy. He's just going to go all the way back up to the war room, maybe. And we're going to start, like, using him to, like, you know, uh, deal with the captain's drone in a bit. Will be what it'll be all about next. Alright, so, basically going to have the alien fire pop up. The alien fire is basically a permanent card. He's basically going to, like, inflict damage on us while he's basically in play. Whenever, like, you know, shields take damage, so got to watch out for that. Essentially, next turn, this is going to do 20% damage instead of 10%, which is bad. And this will also do 20% damage, which is bad. And trail senses will be offline, apparently. That's unfortunate. Alright, well, anyways, let's get um, this show on the road. So, that was his turn. We now basically flip these guys back around. And it's the Chief Engineer's turn! Alright, so this entire time we've basically been like wasting a lot of time basically here, not fixing a jump core. Having all this other stuff happen. Let's have her. She's gonna jump over here to the, uh, the jump core. I'll take her one action. Now she fixes the jump core really fast, and she has like, you know, uh, discounts on, on like, you know, engineering. So basically what she can do, she's going to be able to repair the jump core once, and it'll basically take her one action because of her discount, and it'll take her free of these engineerings because of her discount. But because she's also got another free, like, you know, engineering cards, she can do it again for her third action. And we'll basically get this down to uh, another level. Basically, when we get to engage, we can like you know um, lift, like get out of here. So we have to like repair three more times. And then for our next action, let's have her just like you know book it back over here to, to computer core, where she you know start like fixing out some engineering, so she you know start fixing stuff up. So that'll be her turn. And that's pretty cool. Let's have uh, this happen then. So. Basically, we're going to take 20% damage and the comp system is going to go offline. This is going to hurt this alien fire, so I have to really deal with him soon, but whatever. Ooh, that's not good. There's going to be stuff in a bridge, too. But whatever, we'll deal with that when we get to it. Alright, so basically it's the, um, the cyborg's turn. The cyborg needs to start fig figuring out, like, you know, um, you know, other stuff that's going to be happening. Oh, you know what? She can't actually go, um, d uh, basically anywhere at the moment. It, it took her an extra turn because of this, like, you know, increased gravity to get down here. So she actually had to, like, you know, the, sit down in the engineering after she's basically done, because that's all she could do. Alright, so that's cool to know, but whatever. 
Um, basically, what we have to do basically next is try and get that teleport probably online, I guess. So let's see here. You know what? Let's have like you know him transfer over two of these like entering for his turn. Um, that'll basically like be for repairing the, the teleport when we get to it. This guy isn't affected near his, um, this guy, so that's fine. Um, his next thing will be, I guess, to like you know start thinking about like other stuff he basically repair. So. Let's have him go up to CPU core. He'll draw another engineering. And this is like important to get this stuff out of here because like, you know, it's gonna, um, you know, go splat in a moment. There's a command, that command's pretty cool because it lets you do stuff over here. He'll get that command. And that's just like, you know, uh, I think that's it. He had to give like two there. He moved there for a third turn. And then, like, he took a repair command from here. Hmm. You know what? Let's take a, a tactical instead, because... I, t I technically got commands for this guy here, so that's that thing. Alright, so basically this stuff's gonna get discarded because of the, you know, the internal centers going offline because of this thing. So it'll take 20% damage. We're actually getting really uh, close to losing at this point because, you know, spheels are going way down. Which is bad. And if that happens, I'm dead. So we have to basically deal with, um, with um, we have to repair our shields and deal with this alien fire pretty damn soon. All right, so this might be a very quick game as a result of like you know me screwing around a little bit. But we're in here in the war room now. Battle plans can actually be really powerful, so there's actually reason for me, my guy to like stay here. I guess. I'm thinking here, what do I want to do? Something I could do is go over to um, the shields here. I don't have the tactical repair them though, so that's a, uh, that's a thing. Okay, we're going to try hoping for battle plans and hoping that they can help me out here, because there's some powerful ones that can let you do stuff. For, uh, let you do stuff. The first thing here is system bypass. At any time, repair up to two systems as a free action. You do not need to be in a system location to use this card. Okay, this is really useful because it lets me like repair stuff. Specifically, it can let me repair the comp system and a torpedo tube, or the internal scanners, or the teleporter for free. That's pretty damn useful because I can like repair this. And let's see, what else could I repair? And by the way, this took like one of these command cards to do, so that's gone. Um, I'm tempted to get the comp system online, just so I can transfer cards around if I need to. But I don't think it'll help that much. I think I've already lost, to be honest, but whatever, we'll see what I can do. Um... Let's fix the teleporter and a torpedo tube. So that's basically done. You're, you're gone. We don't really care about you. You can go into the box. Now let's go for another good battle plan here. I probably should be shuffling these, so let's just do that. Okay, next one is backup system. At any time, choose one one. So I can repair the computers as a free action. Um or draw free RAM skill cards. Was this a RAM was this a free action, I have to wonder? Yeah, that's a free action, so that's fine. So let's see, what does this one do? At any time, choose one one. Repair computers as a free action, or draw free RAM skill cards as a free action. You don't need to be to be in a computer core to use this card, but also the computer core has to be like you know active for it to work. All right, that's not too useful, but well, whatever. We'll draw, I guess, free cards from the thing here. You draw. Oh, that's all the wrong cards, isn't it? Whoops. One, two, three. Well, I got a tactical and a um, that thing. I guess that's sort of useful. But you know what? We just lost the game because there's no way that she can fire like the um, 
uh, the torpedoes. Basically, what's going to happen? Three of these guys are going to drop onto like the bridge here. Even if like I like you know um, was able to like fire off the torpedoes, that thing's still going to like crush my ship's like shields, and um, it's game over basically as a result. Oh wait, it's not game over. It goes to zero percent first. Um, she, but here, here's still the thing. I can't destroy this thing because I need to have like you know command point to like do so. And no one has any command. And there's like, you know, none here present or anything like that. So basically there's like nothing to like the chief um the chief uh, engineer can do. So yeah, very quick game I guess for this one. Like, she could teleport up here and kill these three guys, but she doesn't have any type of repair to shields. She could teleport over here to the armory and try and fire us off, but she doesn't have uh, the tactical or, and no one has, like, you know, um, the other thing either. So we've lost, and that's it for this game. But you get the basic idea of what this game's all about. Um, I thought it'd be a cool game to show off. I plan to play this, play this with a friend, and, you know, maybe if, like, Corn Schneider or, like, you know, Managamara would be interested, I might play, um, uh, a game of them, perhaps, online. That's basically it. Well, well that's interesting for a flip. I guess the world just falls away from us, I guess. Well, whatever. That's basically, uh, The Captain is Dead. I've got another game I'll be showing off of, I guess, in the future, but that's this one for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the like, quick showing of uh, The Captain is Dead. Take care.